March 30th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Deuteronomy chapter 25 and 26 of the Old Testament If controversy arises between people, they should go to court for judgment. When the judges hear the case, they shall exonerate the innocent, but condemn the guilty. Then if the guilty person is sentenced to a beating, the judge shall force him to lie down and be beaten in his presence with the number of blows his wicked behavior deserves. The judge may sentence him to forty blows, but no more. If he is struck with more than these, you might view your fellow Israelite with contempt. You must not muzzle your ox when it is treading grain. If brothers live together and one of them dies without having a son, the dead man's wife must not remarry someone outside the family. Instead, her late husband's brother must go to her, marry her, and perform the duty of a brother-in-law. Then the first son she bears will continue the name of the dead brother, thus preventing his name from being blotted out of Israel. But if the man does not want to marry his brother's widow, then she must go to the elders at the town gate and say, My husband's brother refuses to preserve his brother's name in Israel. He is unwilling to perform the duty of a brother-in-law to me. Then the elders of the city must summon him and speak to him. If he persists, saying, I don't want to marry her, then his sister-in-law must approach him in view of the elders, remove his sandal from his foot, and spit in his face. She will then respond, Thus may it be done to any man who does not maintain his brother's family line. His family name will be referred to in Israel as the family of the one whose sandal was removed. If two men get into a hand-to-hand -hand fight, and the wife of one of them gets involved to help her husband against his attacker, and she reaches out her hand and grabs his genitals, then you must cut off her hand. Do not pity her. You must not have in your bag different stone weights, a heavy and a light one. You must not have in your house different measuring containers, a large and a small one. You must have an accurate and correct stone weight and an accurate and correct measuring container, so that your life may be extended in the land the Lord your God is about to give you. For anyone who acts dishonestly in these ways is abhorrent to the Lord your God. Remember what the Amalekites did to you on your way from Egypt, how they met you along the way and cut off all your stragglers in the rear of the march when you were exhausted and tired. They were unafraid of God. So when the Lord your God gives you relief from all the enemies who surround you in the land, he is giving you as an inheritance. You must wipe out the memory of the Malachites from under heaven. Do not forget. When you enter the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and you occupy it and live in it, you must take the first of all the ground's produce you harvest from the land the Lord your God is giving you, place it in a basket, and go to the place where he chooses to locate his name. You must go to the priest in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord promised to our ancestors to give us. The priest will then take the basket from you and set it before the altar of the Lord your God. Then you must affirm before the Lord your God, a wandering Armenian was my ancestor, and he went down to Egypt and lived there as a foreigner with a household few in number. But there he became a great, powerful, and numerous people. But the Egyptians mistreated and oppressed us, forcing us to do burdensome labor. So we cried out to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, and he heard us and saw our humiliation, toil, and oppression. Therefore the Lord brought us out of Egypt, with tremendous strength and power, as well as with great awe-inspiring signs and wonders. Then he brought us to this place and gave us this land a land flowing with milk and honey. So now look, I have brought the first of the ground's produce that you, Lord, have given me. Then you must set it down before the Lord your God and worship before him. You will celebrate all the good things that the Lord your God has given you and your family, along with the Levites and the resident foreigners among you. When you finish tithing all your income in the third year, the year of tithing, you must give it to the Levites, the resident foreigners, the orphans, and the widows so that they may eat to their satisfaction in your villages. Then you shall say before the Lord your God, 
I have removed the sacred offering from my house and given it to the Levites, the resident foreigners, the orphans, and the widows, just as you have commanded me. I have not violated or forgotten your commandments. I have not eaten anything when I was in mourning, or removed any of it while ceremoniously unclean, or offered any of it to the dead. I have obeyed you and have done everything you have commanded me. Look down from your holy dwelling place in heaven and bless your people Israel and the land you have given us, just as you promised our ancestors, a land flowing with milk and honey. Today the Lord your God is commanding you to keep these statutes and ordinances, something you must do with all your heart and soul. Today you have declared the Lord to be your God and that you will walk in his ways, keep his statutes, commandments, and ordinances, and obey him. And today the Lord has declared you to be his special people, as he already promised you, so you may keep all his commandments. Then he will elevate you above all the nations he has made, and you will receive praise, fame, and honor. You will be a people holy to the Lord your God, as he has said. God, today I thank you for my land of milk and honey. Looking back on my life and so many things that I have been through, just like everybody who's listening right now. Some of it caused by the sin of others, some of it caused by our own sin. All very painful parts of our lives. And yet here you've brought us into your fold. Here you've made us your children. Here you've given us this amazing peace in our heart that even as chaos continues to go on around us, that we can turn and look to you for our land of milk and honey, for our comfort, for our provision. God, we trust and obey you. And we are incredibly thankful and blessed and honored that you give us all these things. I can only speak for me, but I'm so undeserving of what you give us. I'm so undeserving of the place you found for me to live at a price that allows me to still do my ministry. I'm so undeserving to have the amazing people that you've put in my life to help guide my walk with you. I'm so undeserving at your intimate attention to every detail of my life that is filled with grace and mercy when I stumble and stumble and stumble every single day. I so don't deserve to even be doing this ministry. Yet only through the grace of you and the crucifixion of your son is my life even made worth something in order to be able to read your word and read it so that others can hear it. I am blessed, God. I am blessed more than I know I, I give you credit for, but I am blessed. I thank you for my land of milk and honey. And I ask that you continue to help me be in your will and keep your commandments and your statutes. Just as you ask Israel thousands of years ago. I ask that you help me obey you. As that is what I desire. I want to be your people that is holy to you, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.